the key thing with budgeting is actually kind of uh, is almost outside of your finance software it's actually kind of having a plan and actually kind of knowing why you're doing what you're doing it's a great chance to uh, get your kind of planning in place it's a great opportunity each year it really is isn't it and if you're listening to this as a church leader and, and you're not aware of your church budget then then please take an interest in in the people running it please take an interest in in what's what's happening and and you're right i think there are well hello and welcome to the church office podcast my name is gavin smith and it's a joy today to welcome you to our admin and ops podcast we love talking about the work of ministry behind the scenes and i haven't just got one special guest today I've got two, two on. So the guys from Expense Plus, Sam and Dan, welcome to the podcast, guys. Hello, thanks for having us. It's great to be here. I've always enjoyed watching, listening to this podcast. So uh, yeah, it's pleasure to be involved. Mate, it's great. Sam, you still with yep. us with those headphones I, on? I'm still here, yeah. I'm still <laughs> I'm still desk standing at my desk and moving around. No, uh, yeah, thank you as well for having us on. And yeah, you're doing great work, Gavin. And uh, yeah, it's just a pleasure to uh, get to be with you this afternoon. It's great. And uh, our, our theme today or our, our discussion is going to be around about church pitfalls of finances. And and these guys are the experts in this. And you know, I've talked to you before about Expense Plus on the podcast. This is a brilliant piece of uh, cloud-based software that just helps churches organize their finances and delivers brilliance in all of that. And we'll we'll give these guys an opportunity to promote it and update us. But before we jump into the conversation, I need to tell you about our sponsors, Church Suite. And uh, you guys are big fans of Church Suite, aren't you, as well? Uh, We love Gavin and the team there and are grateful for their partnership with us at the church office. And uh, if you haven't heard of them, then please go and check out their website and find out a little bit more than them. They are more than just a church database. They have uh, modules and tools that will help church managers and administrators, those in pastoral ministry, to do their job better. And there are so many different ways that you can do that. And uh, please check out our podcast that we did with Gavin just on the latest stuff that they're doing in relating to their training and passing on knowledge to new staff members and things like that. They are thinking ahead and thinking about ways that they can serve us as administrators and operations staff. So please check out their website and uh, get involved. Lads, your, your experience of Church Week? Oh, brilliant. I was a church ops director in Guildford for a, a few years and couldn't have done my job without it. Um yeah, I mean, we there are so many buzzwords we use for these things, but it was it was really game changing, um, and you know, especially all the comm stuff that it allowed us to do during the pandemic, and you know, church changed on a sixpence overnight, and then it changed again the next night, and um, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, it was just it's a it's a really fantastic system um, that was a, a joy for us to use really, and is you know is still helping thousands of churches today, which is just brilliant. And similarly, our church in Leeds uses it. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, Gavin and the team down in uh, down Nottingham, well, they're all around the UK. They're, they're just fab. And uh, yeah, just such a blessing to churches. So we are, we are very big fans of Church Suite. Yeah, and, and we're big fans and uh, and big fans of you guys. And I think what, what we love is is Gavin and Sam and Pete, you, you know, your passion for the local church, your passion to, to find a tool that is useful and serves churches, um, that's the same heart that we've got, and so to kind of partner all together and is a is a real blessing. So, Sam, tell us what's new about Expense Plus. What you know, it's been a while since I had you on the podcast. We were at a UCAN conference last time. Um, you're now standing up in your office here. Um, fill us in, mate. Tell us what's what's brilliant and what's new about Expense Plus. I mean, what's brilliant for me is what we get to do. What we get to do, we get to work alongside churches. We get to kind of help them with their church finances and and that just uh it's a joy to come into work every day and just uh, get to work on that uh, our products we keep developing expense plus we keep making it better and um, we keep adding new features we are we've recently added that earlier this year to expense plus we're about to add open banking to expense plus there's always something new going on and for me that just really gives me a buzz uh starting you know starting a week with expense plus being great ending the week with expense plus being even better so uh, in terms of products that's 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 developed a lot since uh since we've last spoken um yeah. in terms of kind of customers our customer base keeps growing churches love what we're doing yeah. getting really good feedback and so again that just keeps us going and wanting to kind of do more and push on um we do we create the expense plus for churches our passion is churches and helping support churches and yeah. um it's just brilliant that we get to do that so yeah yeah i love that 
And Dan, you've been taken on fairly recently, I, I, or I suspect time has, you know, kind of moved on so quickly. You're the head of, uh, what is it, customer support and operations. That sounds pretty fancy. Well, uh, uh, yeah, I've been with Expense Plus since just before Christmas. Um, and yeah, I, I lead our support team, which is an absolute pleasure. Um, so we talk to we talk to churches every day and charities who use our software and um, you know, help them with different ideas about how to make it work best for them. And uh, and I, I organize some of our training material as well, which is which we really enjoy doing. Sam and I often lead bits of that together and have have a lot of fun doing it, but also get a lot out of it. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a great organization to work for a great bunch of people. Um, you know, as you say, a real a real heart to uh, everyone on the on the team has worked in the church, and uh, a real heart to to help church church members and and workers and trustees. You know, understand and manage their their finances better. And I think uh, it brings me real joy when I hear stories about people you know taking less time on that sort of stuff, so they've got more time for other stuff. Um, and also, you know, being able to understand things in the way that they didn't before, which enables them to make better decisions. And um, yeah, it's great. I am. Um, I really enjoy it. Oh, great. Well, it's great to have you guys on. And um, we're talking about kind of church pitfalls of, of finances and, and money. Um, and, and I think, you know, we've chatted before about the, the challenges of, you know, treasurers getting older. And, you know, I met a treasurer last week. He was 70 plus and um trying to talk to him about you know how we can move forward with you know your software and, and there are other bits of software that people can use um to help them in this area and 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 I have started to see a bit of a change it'd be interesting to know what you guys think about this where there seems to be a little bit more of a team approach rather than just a treasurer and your software also allows for that team approach um what, what what's kind of happening on the ground with churches in relation to that yeah we hear quite a lot of um you know, or, you know, we'll need to think about payroll this month because the treasurer is away on holiday or, you know, oh, we can't have a finance report at this quarterly trustees meeting because the, you know, the laptop, that the software is on has, has broken yeah. all that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, it, we hear quite a lot of, uh, of that when people when people come to us and we've we've built Expense Plus in a way that actually none of that is a problem. Um, you know, as you say, everyone can access the system at the, at the level they need to. Um, and. Uh, there's there's a thing about making sure that people have the right information there's also a thing about making sure the wrong people don't have the wrong information both in terms of confidentiality but also yeah. sort of being able to see the the wood from the trees so being able to build something that's sort of customizable and give people the right information at the right time is really important but also as you say the sort of the sort of cloud-based approach and actually say you don't you know if you've got a different person or you're using a different machine or whatever then none of that matters and people i think are quite especially in this day and age are quite um, they really care about what's being done with their data and where it's being stored and how it's being looked after and all that sort of thing. So we take obviously that very seriously. Um, but being able to build a tool that, as you say, that everyone can use in different ways at different times. Lots of people working from home now. You know, gone are the days where you have to take a slip into the church office and leave it on the finance person's desk who might not be there for another week because they only yeah. work one day a week and you miss them at lunchtime or whatever it is. So we've got all of that in, the, in well, not even in the back of our heads, in the front of our heads, I suppose, as we're thinking about how this stuff works in practice in in local churches and charities yeah that's great would you add anything else to that sam no i think i think dan's dan's got it got it exactly right um i guess in uh, churches maybe have been a little bit slow to catch up to kind of what businesses have been doing for a while and making things cloud-based and streamlined and efficient and it's, it's really exciting to see churches kind of realize that they maybe need to rethink what they do and often often it's quite a hard thing because often it does involve maybe a treasurer that's done the role for many years moving yeah. on and and that and that can be kind of really painful and obviously they're kind of uh, when that happens they're quite they're kind of very uh, geared towards what they've kind of built and the paper spreadsheets or whatever they're currently using and so often it takes a move of maybe the treasurer to change or the church to just rethink and say how can we use our money better how can we how can we do this better that kind of prompts that but when they do just kind of hearing the feedback we get after that's happened it's yeah. it's it's amazing like because actually uh, it can unlock so many things kind of taking a team-based approach as opposed yeah. to just one person in an office uh, on their laptop actually people have to do stuff with financial data i mean that's what it's about we we, we have to produce reports but actually reports that are then used i mean that's that's really much more exciting yeah i love that that's great well let's get into the first pitfall then dan you're going to take us through the first one what, yeah, what, what, what are you coming something. across yeah well it's all about budgeting which um uh is a sort of bit of a buzzword in the news at the moment isn't it but um i think my uh, 
so the, the pitfall would be not having a rigorous budget for your organization. I think that you know a budget is only ever I worked one, once with the tre treasurer who said a budget's wrong the minute the ink's dry, which is which is right. You know these it can only ever be our our best guess about what's going to happen next. Um, but actually that's a that's much much better than nothing. Um, and I think something that we often see is people you know saying they have a set of priorities sometimes churches will put a, a budget out after a vision sunday or something like that and they say you know we're going to go big on this it's discipleship this year or it's prayer or we're raising money for a new children's worker whatever it is and then the budget comes out and it doesn't actually reflect what last sunday you said were the you know were the really the three really important things so um so i think that's really important but also learning from from the past quite a lot of people um, we'll say, right, it's budgeting season. I'll take last year's budget spreadsheet. I'll make a copy of it. I'll change the year and then we'll, it will flow again. And that's what your best guess was 14 months ago or 13 months ago, but actually it doesn't incorporate any of the learning that you've had in the 12 months since. Um, so I think making sure we're sort of thinking about what's actually happened rather than what we thought would happen last year and adding 5% and hoping for the best. Some people, sometimes not even that. Sometimes they just copy and paste it, put a different year on it and send it off again. And I suppose, understanding what our costs are as part of that is really important you know what are we contractually obliged to do what are we morally obliged to do if we needed to hunker down tomorrow what are our options and what do we have less less ability to sort of influence um and there are some, sometimes some some quite difficult conversations in that sometimes finance can be the catalyst around having some of these harder conversations about the fact that we're not only putting money into things that actually we've said is less of a priority now we're also putting lots of time and emotion into things that um, we said we want to deprioritize so we can go after this other thing because there's never enough time to do everything. Um, and sometimes it's the sort of budget process that, that starts um, starts or advances some of those conversations. There's some sort of more obvious, boring stuff I could talk about, like making sure you've got the right deal on your insurance and are you paying the right amount for your utilities rather than just, just yeah. taking what they told you last year. And, and that's always sort of important but not urgent. We never quite get around to it. Um, you know, there's a couple of subscriptions I have personally. I think, oh, yeah, I've just seen the annual payment go out. I'll, by the time it gets to 11 months' time, I'll make sure I've moved off that and onto something else. Yeah. Um, but also sort of external factors. Uh, you know, in, I'm, I'm a big believer of the fact that charities probably go into sort of crises fairly late but also come out of them quite late. I think that mm -hmm. especially smaller local charities are still – feeling and seeing the effects of covid of the mini budget and the various other things happening there's some sort of political stuff going on in some denominations of church at the moment which is also having an effect on the front line in terms of giving and costs and that sort of thing so i think being aware of all of that is um is really important because then you can be with the right information you can make the right decisions around things like well what does the multi-year you know picture look like is it, can we afford to have a worse year this year if next year gets better you know actually if we had a bad year this year it's okay because that grant's coming down the track or um or whatever and then lastly i suppose around budgeting i'd say communication is really important you know the, the the important three c's communication communication and communication both of the people sort of on the front line <laughs> that are are doing the stuff you know it's all yeah. very well sort of the finance team saying well we're going to cut spending by five percent and we'll all be fine if, if you're not sort of passing that across the people who've got the credit cards and there's a problem um but also communication to the people uh that are supporting you mm. you know we we need to raise this much money for this reason um or actually this year is going to be quite difficult because the roof's starting to leak or you know whatever it is um i think that's really important rather than finance sort of being i mean i would say this but you know rather than it being in a sort of corner and these things happen and then everything else carries on the fact that it sort of needs to thread through various other things so my first pitfall i think would be not having a rigorous budget yeah i think it's a it's a really good point and when we go and visit different churches for the church office <clears throat> we often find churches up to you know 250 people of members without a budget and and in most cases it's because they've got a balance a decent balance on the account and so they don't feel like you know they've needed to you know they've just kind of bought what they needed and just you know as requests come in they sort of they kind of gather around and say, well, what do you guys think? Should we do this or should we not? Um, and, um, and and sometimes that kind of just delays the whole process. Like in some churches, it's like, well, you're going to have to wait until the next meeting to raise this, or you've got to wait till a member's meeting when we can vote on it. And, and different people have different governing structures. But I, I've been quite shocked by the fact that people don't have a budget. Um, I, it's, it's surprising, isn't it? Yeah, and I think I've I've, because of what we're talking about pitfalls i suppose i've sort of presented the downsides of 
uh, or what can go wrong when you don't have one. But I think what the other thing that I, that I didn't mention and perhaps should have is the opportunities that you miss. You yeah. know, some organisations do their budget and think, oh, actually, it's going to be better than we thought. And maybe we can do that, you know, that that thing that we've wanted to do for years or, um, you know, and in the absence of information, one thing that people sometimes can't do is, oh, we can't, we must only spend what's absolutely necessary because we don't know what's going to happen. And, you know, we haven't got the right information, so we'll just have to be really safe. Um, and they miss, you know, amazing opportunities that, that come by. Um, so I think, you know, there is the whole, you know, we're going to have a budget let's not spend more than the budget thing but there's also the whole wider financial planning piece and what might be possible uh, in a scenarios a b and c and then really releasing people to be able to say you know actually we've given you x hundred pounds for kids work or whatever it is like we want you to go off and do good stuff with it yeah. you know don't come back until you spent it spend it on what you want to spend it on and, and go and do what you what you feel is necessary with it, which i think for especially for emerging leaders is really really important yeah, I think it's a great training ground, isn't it? To to empower someone to say, right, you know, here's a, the five thousand pound budget. What are you going to do with it this year? What are your hopes and dreams? And you know, you're going to have to follow our our processes and the way that you spend money. But actually, we really want you to take some some leadership, if you like, into this. Um, Sam, just picking up on this from your experience, have you found that there are church leaders who are engaged in in the budgeting, or do you think often it's just left to the treasurer to go, right, just get on with it, or the finance team? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it really, really varies. And I think that one of the reasons to talk about this is it's worth thinking through. So the way that different churches are going to put together a budget is going to look different and it's going to involve a whole load of different elements. And it's going to depend on the financial situation of the kind of different churches. But I think I think probably a couple of things that I would add to what Dan said. Firstly, that, yeah, make sure ultimately your budget lines with your vision like finance is one of the things that god gives us to kind of steward well and to kind of uh help uh, fulfill our mission as as churches and so if our budget is not aligned to what our vision is then there's a problem and, and so often budgets are created completely outside of that process where maybe the last year's budget's taken and five percent is added or maybe uh, churches go and ask all of their leaders what do they want to spend and that's all okay but actually if it doesn't align back to our vision then we're probably not using money money really wisely. And so I think I think that's the first point. The second point would be that we assume that everyone else in the church, maybe because we're good with money, we know what our budget is, that everyone else is as well. And so the number of churches that I see that they even put quite a lot of time into making a budget, and then actually they don't they don't communicate it to budget holders. And some budget holders like they they don't know what to do with a budget. And so they kind of either do nothing with it or they, you know, go crazy and spend all yeah. of it. Like actually we need to be training our leaders as to yeah. why we're budgeting what our bigger vision is and then also how to manage a budget as well so um, we'll talk a little bit about expense plus in a minute but actually the the key thing with budgeting is actually kind of uh is almost outside of your finance software it's actually kind of having a plan and actually kind of knowing why you're doing what you're doing and it's a great chance to uh, get your kind of planning in place it's a great opportunity each year um, or ideally more regularly but at least each year to kind of go what is it we're doing let's not just do what we've always done because if we do we'll probably get what we've always got and that old uh, kind of saying is, is really true and so budgeting is a really important part of uh, kind of finances for churches it really is isn't it and if you're listening to this as a church leader and, and you're not aware of your church budget then then please take an interest in in the people running it please take an interest in in what's what's happening and and you're right i think there are some things in a budget that you can really unlock some ministry and often we find don't we you know god will bring a season an opportunity something new will come along and there's an opportunity for us to say actually can we do could we go and serve the community in this way and being able to kind of build in some of those, you know, contingencies or those those opportunities um, saying, look, OK, we're going to put 5,000 aside. We've no idea what that 5,000 is going to be used for. But if something comes up this year that, that we go, yeah, this is exciting. This we can see us, you know, uh, there's grace at work here. We can go and do something here to go and serve the community. We, we've already got the approval. We've already got the funds to do something. And then. Uh, and that, that that kind of mixture of faith and kind of you know stewardship is 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 really interesting to see how different churches do do budget um and whether they're thinking about the future um it, it makes it does make a big point dan have you got anything else you'd add on that before we jump into number two i, I suppose only to expand what you just said in terms of you know make being aware about how elastic you can sort of afford to be in terms of finance as i mentioned about the sort of multi-year thing but you know when 
when you might need to make different decisions depending on what's happening. But rarely, you know, if you have a financial year, say from April to March, if the income in April doesn't match the expenditure in April, that's not normally a problem for some for some organisations that are sort of living quite hand to mouth. It might be, but um, but largely it's it's okay so long as you know you can make it up in May and June and July or whatever. And I think especially if you're as you just said, sort of putting pots of money aside for for things that might come down the track. Yeah. Um, just being aware on of sort of what again what your what the, you have the ability to do and what how much sort of creative license you can afford around your planning I think is really important because often people are either not aware of it at all and things go wrong or too risk averse and and then uh, and then it goes wrong the other way yeah absolutely right yeah yeah no that's really helpful um Sam you're going to take us to pitfall number two and I'm sure there's going to be overlap and crossover with some of these things as we chat through it what what is pitfall number two what is what are expense plus seeing Great. So pitfall number two, two is something that I've had uh, firsthand experience of when from my church that I used to be the operations manager of for many years. And that is clunky financial processing. We used to spend lots of time uh, kind of creating accounts. So we used to have paper based um, financial processes, kind of filing of receipts. People used to have to bring their expense forms into the office. Approvals were kind of done on paper as well. And but essentially, as a result of not having proper digital processes, our bookkeeper essentially had to spend a lot of time keying in data um, to create monthly accounts. So um, that was one issue was the amount of time and kind of wastage spent on trying to create accounts. The second problem that we had is that actually our budget holders and those in leadership kind of trying to make financial decisions couldn't see kind of reports in a lifetime where essentially we had a budget but our budget holders had no way of actually tracking in lifetime what they were what they were spending and so uh, this is my kind of first uh, kind of like pitfall that I want to share for those listening to this podcast maybe it's something they can relate to I guess a key question for me that um, churches should probably spend a little bit more time asking is is the software that you're using up to the job like does it help you manage your finance efficiently and effectively um, in a kind of streamlined way or is it a hindrance and um, for our own church we looked for other finance packages um, and we couldn't find one that was actually up to doing the job which is why we created expense plus um, six or seven years ago and since then lots of churches have come to use the accounting package that we've created I guess for our church, what it's meant is that we're able to create accounts in a fraction of the time. It's meant that budget holders can kind of see uh, see what is being spent in lifetime as well. There's tons of other features inside Expense Plus, which really uh, we've built to bless churches. But I guess for our church, what it's enabled is it's enabled us to actually spend more time doing some of those uh, things that actually have quite a lot of benefit that lots of churches Mm -hmm. kind of maybe don't have time to do. So getting uh, asking donors to complete gift aid declarations where there aren't gift aid declarations, thanking new givers, which is obviously really important, better managing supplier contracts, which can ultimately save churches uh, lots of money, applying for grants and also looking at other ways to reduce costs. So um, the pitfall is clunky financial processes. The solution is probably just to ask the question, is our is our accounting package actually really helping us with managing our finances or, or, or maybe do we need to look at this again? Yeah. And, and I think you're touching on a really good point there because lots of churches that I see do have these quite long processes um you know if someone spends money you could wait a whole month before y- you're paid and, and most of the time it's longer than that um which then creates a bit of a culture where people don't bother putting in expenses because they think well i'll just get the the kids stuff this week because it's easier um than having to follow it up um it is clunky isn't it and and what you're right is saying is right you know you need to go away and just just pause on it and say right who, who's involved in our financing um, what's the package that we're currently using? Does it meet our requirements? What are some of the things that are frustrating, things that, that just go, you know, this isn't a blessing? And I think you're right. You're touching on a good point. It ties in again, doesn't it, to this kind of releasing leaders to do ministry, being able to have a budget, to know what you've got, to have the late life data um, really does serve people, make decisions and take initiative and stuff in that. So, Dan, anything else you add into that, mate? Yeah, I suppose just the way that the culture, you know, the culture can can mirror the processes. So the system that you might use is a big part of the processes. Um, but also it relies on the culture of, you know, people putting their expenses on time so that these reports we've talked about are up to date and have all the big, uh, big information. Um, you know, and another part of that is if people know that they're not going to be able to, you know, they're going to be stepping away from giving to a church or whatever, then actually some communication around that's really important because we're going to be projecting what our income is over the next few months that not that's not always possible but there are there are times when it is 
um, and you know, and and people turning up to the meetings having read the information, so you can have all of the right conversations. So, so I think there's sort of the the technical and process bit of the sort of processes and systems, but there's also then about how that reflects into the way that people use them and contribute to them. Yeah. Um, and and I suppose the the pitfall within a pitfall would be that you get all the technical stuff right and don't address the sort of yeah. cultural stuff, if that makes yeah. sense, and then you don't yeah. get the yeah. best from from these systems that you've implemented. Yeah, it's good. Sam, what would you say to a church who'd go in, well, you know, the clunky processes that we've got, you know, tick some boxes with our auditors and and, and they've always they've always done it this way and they always like it this way and and uh, we just kind of follow that so it's cheaper for our accounts that are be produced. Um I, I can imagine that's a pushback that you've heard before. Um I mean it's it's not one we hear too often, but I think I think that um I think that often yeah, often actually people were kind of afraid of change, I think would be would be one thing that I'd say. I think people are kind of nervous of doing things differently. What if our independent examiner doesn't, doesn't like what we do? I mean, I think that I think that these these are obviously valid concerns, but I think probably a couple of things that I bring to it. Firstly, you're not you're not trying to design your processes around your system. Yeah. You, you really want your system to work around how you want your processes to be. And yeah. I think I think probably that's what's quite unique about Expense Plus, that actually we've all worked in churches. We all understand what a, what a brilliant kind of streamlined process would look like. And we've built Expense Plus to do that. So I think, firstly, kind of the kind of that we can't do that because our kind of our finance system doesn't allow that. That's problematic. The second thing of our exa independent examiner may not be happy. I mean, I guess invite them to come on a tour and have a look at mm -hmm. look at expense plus. Actually, the the reality is that um, independent examiners are happy with uh, are happy with expense plus. We've um, we've recently worked with stewardship and have added some uh, some brilliant year end reports inside expense plus, and we've kind of uh, we've worked with them to do that. So you know they they independent examine many kind of churches, and we've kind of worked hard to make sure that um, that works really well for at the churches that they independent examine. So we've worked with independent examiners to build expense plus. Um, we don't have any issues with uh, churches that use expense plus kind of not able to create the accounts that they need expense plus is not just used by really small churches it's used by really large churches and probably the final thing to say is that whether you create accounts on kind of a receipts and payments basis or on an accruals basis again we've designed it around that so it's not a, it's not a question that we hear often um but the best way is to check out expense plus and find out whether it is right for your kind of yeah. church yeah that's fab that's great okay Sam, number three. Well, I've got to feel like it's going to be reporting or something like that. It, it is going to be reporting or something like that. It's exactly reporting, and so its reports <laughs> are created but not used. And this is yeah. this is something that um, that I feel really passionately about because yeah, churches spend a lot of time going into creating reports a lot goes into it particularly if your financial processes are not that great and you do have a bookkeeper sitting there keying all of the data in then you've gone to a lot of effort of creating reports and so this pitfall is you've created the reports right but what are you actually doing with them so obviously creating financial accounts is statutory you have to do that um, but actually like if that's all you're going to do then it's probably a far simpler way to do it you probably don't need to go to the effort of doing everything you're doing and so this point is all about look actually we're bothering to create reports how do we actually use them in a way that's effective? And so, yeah, for many churches, they create monthly accounts. So one or two weeks after the month has ended, and they then send out accounts for the kind of the previous month. Um, but that's a bit of a problem because if you spent something at the start of a month, you're actually going to wait kind of five or six weeks before it's ever visible on a financial report. And that that's a bit of a problem. Secondly, most churches either send out um, or print out a paper-based report or a PDF report, which is very flat. You kind of can't drill in. You can't find anything uh, uh, you can't find any information and almost immediately it's produced it may well be out of date and again this is a bit of a problem for churches because if you can't have lifetime up-to-date um, financial information then then how can your budget holders kind of make make good decisions so um, for most churches really sadly financial reports are often and kind of largely historical records rather than providing kind of up-to-date information that leaders actually use to proactively kind of make better decisions. Um, and I and this, this this pitfall, I guess, has lots of mini holes in it. So it's not just one yeah. pitfall. There's kind of several elements to this. Um, one of those um, is that essentially uh, churches can often uh, not help themselves by making their financial reports quite complicated. And so maybe at some point in time, someone has asked for a report to, mm. uh, about something that's quite niche. And so um, actually to the monthly report pack has been added this new report. And so 
accounts quite often for most churches can be overly complicated when actually what most people need to see is kind of like a high level breakdown of kind of income and expenditure and so probably one challenge would be um, actually how simple are your kind of accounts how simple are your monthly reports for those reading it and I think that that is that is one element to this Related to this, I think that there's an assumption that church leaders and those responsible for managing a budget actually understand fund accounting um, mm -hmm. and, and and they understand how to manage a budget and they understand what to look for in the financial reports that they've been sent. And, and that's just not true. Like as in as in lots of people that are involved in leading in churches, they're, they're not trained. They, they don't understand kind of what to look for within a financial report. Um, and so I guess I guess a, a challenge with this is actually are you providing your team? Are you providing those that you're experiencing? expecting to look at the financial reports with the right training and with the right commentary and kind of helping them understand what it is you're wanting them to kind of come back to you with and so chances are you might be creating reports but actually the people that are receiving them are kind of taking a glance at them not really understanding them filing them and so again the effort that you've gone to creating reports mm -hmm. actually lots of that might be wasted unless you kind of put these things in place for your team yeah, I think it does raise a really good point. And I think often um, the, the the team agendas that I've seen for churches, often finance is definitely on there, but it, it it's, it's towards the end. And it's one of those ones that, okay, actually, we'll, we haven't got time this month to do it. We'll we'll drop it off for next month. And, and the person you know who's prepped that has spent the three or four hours doing the work, which has become now, you know, unnecessary in one way um in terms of the reporting and, and it, it's so true i i love finance reports i i love the data i love crunching it and, and just thinking about it and and being creative with the the budgets that we have and 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 the reports start to tell that kind of story don't they of ministry and start to tell the story of what's going on um so they are really really useful we've we've got into a really good habit with our team that we do sort of a quarterly one so rather than monthly we try to bring it into a quarter and we try and just bring it out to the table to all of our elders so they get the opportunity to see uh, what's happening. Um, and, and I think that's helped people take an interest in it. That's helped uh, as we've started to go, right, well, what are we going to, go, we need to discuss whether we're going to spend some money on this area of the building. And rather than just me presenting something and it's a yes or no, we've now got some interest in people who are going, OK, well, last quarter we saw this and the quarter before that we saw that. We've got a better conversation around the table, which means we are going to lead to a better decision. Um, and so I, I love that aspect of it. Um, Dan, tell us about the reporting part of Expense Plus. What, what, can, what can people draw out of the data? Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I suppose that the key thing is that people can only see what they need uh, and what other people want them to see. So Sam mentioned about different bases of accounting. You know, if you if you told Expense Plus that you prepare accounts on a receipts and payments basis, then we'll give you reports that are useful and applicable to that and won't bother you with the rest. Yeah. Um, but also, if you have someone that is only in charge of your kids ministry and that's, you know, two expenditure categories in a single fund, then they will just have reports to to that and they'll only be able to submit expenses to that. I think on, um, you know, we've all been in organisations where they say, oh, here's here's the expense claim form or here's the finance package and you just need to pick from this list of 500 mm -hmm. things, um, you know, and if it's coach travel on a Wednesday, it goes in here and if it's coach travel on a Friday, it goes somewhere completely different. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I think just making sure that people have got access to, to the things they need and not to the things they don't need is really important. Yeah. As Sam mentioned, the, the reports are drillable. So, you, you know, if you've got the right access, you can say, well, actually, tell me, you said we spent £500 on comms in March. You know, what was that? Oh, it's £200 on the website and £300 on flyers. You know, who, who was the supplier? Who authorised it? When did it get paid? All that sort of thing. The information's, the information's all there. And there are so many different ways to sort of, I often say, slice and dice. You know, the, the same information for income. You might want to say, well, what method did the income come in through? You might say, how much? You know, what donors have given what, or what donors have we got in different bands, or, um, you know, where, how's that profiled through different months? So there's lots of different ways of seeing the information, yeah. all of which can be, you know, simplified for the sake of, as you say, a sort of a brief trustees update or if you're the finance person you can really drill in and see as much detail as you want um and it's amazing how often we hear of people saying like you know either to prepare the equivalent thing i had to spend quite a lot of time doing it or more often we just didn't have that level of analysis available you know we just had to either guess or keep a second spreadsheet or you know all the rest of it so yeah. um that's really nice for us to hear that it's being it's being used so well as well used. yeah that's helpful um yeah anything else to add into that sam 
Yeah, I think, I, I mean, I think Dan's covered uh, lots of the kind of extra points that kind of needed mentioning. I guess just to go back to the simplicity aspect of it, like actually to your point, Gavin, that actually getting the whole team involved in finances is a far bigger win than one or two people, I don't know, creating a budget and they knowing them knowing what's going on. So again, just to think through, like, are you making your finances in terms of kind of uh, your software, but also your processes and also your reports? It's just really simple. You're far better to make something much more simple and get lots more engagement, involvement and buy-in than you are to kind of have something that's really complicated that only has yeah. one or two people involved. You're going to get a far bigger impact that way. Yeah. It's great. And I think the reporting side of things helps as well because you, you, you always get the opportunity to look at trends, don't you? And, and, and we find in our church the quarterly giving is so different in each quarter that you could get through the first part of the year and think, oh, great. You get to the summer quarter and you're like, Oh no. Okay. We, our giving's down. Do we need to panic? Do we need to go and say something to the church? How are we going to do this? And if you've got those years of reports and being able to look back quickly and go, actually, do you know what? Come the third quarter, we're going to be absolutely fine. The last quarter is our best quarter in terms of our giving. And and there are trends, even though people have standing orders and they, they're giving regularly um, we still do notice those things. And it's good to see that because not all budgets are spent as well at the same point of the year. And so being able to kind of just review those things and think about those things is really, Gavin, really useful. Gavin, I think I think you're so right. And actually, uh, and actually, it's probably worth saying that we as well as having finance reports, we also have donation reports built in with Inside Expense Plus that we've created this for churches, like it's all designed around the needs for churches. And in terms of kind of thinking about where you're going to end up, again, things like budget projections are built into the kind of reports that are available in Expense Plus so that you don't have to guess where something's going to lead to. You can kind of forward project where you're, where you're going to end up and do some of those manual calculations that you'd have had to do kind of on paper or in a spreadsheet. You can, you can just do that inside the finance software, which is ideal, having everything in one place. Yeah. Great. And and let me let me raise another question here. And I haven't prepped you either of you guys for this. Um, but we've we kind of took a decision as a church in the last year to kind of stop our kind of conferencing business that so we were hiring out the building and kind of to, our, our elders got together and said, you know, do we want to continue doing this? Uh, you know, some of the trends have changed in terms of the training and how people are doing online. But essentially, there was a decision to go, right, we're, we're going to stop this. And because of that decision at an elders retreat in January, the impact on the budget is now we're in a 90,000 deficit. I, I've been doing finances for 21 years in our church and we've never had a deficit budget, you know. Um, and so we're talking about, you know, reporting, we're talking about budgeting. Churches are going to find themselves in deficit budgets how does your software, how does the online cloud stuff that you're doing, Expense Plus, help us in that? Because because it feels like there needs to be more time spent on it. There needs to be more careful analysis of you know cash flow coming in and not. Um, give me a couple of thoughts on on that before we go on to the last one. I think the the big question with with that for me is always uh, you know where where is that money going? You know is there an obvious um, and sometimes it's completely. It's completely valid. I mentioned earlier that you know some, there's you could do a whole podcast on when to have a deficit budget. Sometimes it's a, sometimes it's a disaster. Sometimes it is really good investment and absolutely necessary. But it's really important to know why it's the case. So is it that income's down? Is it that that expenditure's generally gone up, or is it that you know you're buying a new thing for ninety thousand pounds and this is a once in a generation, um, this is a one in a generation occurrence sort of thing? Um, and as you said, being able to look back at previous years and say well actually you know what what are the differences what are the trends mm -hmm. um and and i suppose when you when you're in a deficit budget you might also be thinking well this much is allowable but we cannot go and you know it can't get it, i don't want to use the words worse but it can't we can't do much more than this so then it becomes around the sort of controls throughout the rest of the year so you know in terms of expense plus we've we've got that reporting that helps people actually really, as I mentioned earlier, look at the headlines, but also drill in and say, I want to see exactly what's happening in each category. Um, and for, you know, for years going back, as long as they've used the system in terms of then the sort of the rest of the year going forward. Well, as Sam said earlier, you know, it's about having good processes in place and then making the system match those. And, you know, the stuff we've built around 
being able to uh, give approval to expenditure is really important and, and people who are managing these budgets being able to see what's happening um, being able to get their email in the morning saying you know Bob and Sally want to spend some money from your from your budget category is that okay you know ap approve or not so I think um, you know in case of a deficit budget it's you know how have we got here can we manage it and then what do we do next I think is really yeah. really important in terms yeah. of keeping keeping that up for the rest of the year yeah it's good yeah Sam what do you any other thoughts for you yeah, for me, it's all around communication. So as I've mentioned before, churches spend a lot of time creating budgets, but actually do do how well do they communicate it for people making decisions? How close are they to the detail? And this is where simplicity comes in, because actually, if those making financial decisions are much closer to the detail, you've made it accessible for them. They can obviously include that element when making decisions. And then as Dan's just mentioned, actually communicating with your budget holders. So if the right thing now to do is to change some of the budgets that have been set, Actually, tools like Expense Plus give your budget holders a way of actually tracking in live time whether they're keeping to that. Um, and you can obviously with, throughout the financial reports see where kind of areas are kind of uh, overspending. And so, yeah, I guess I guess it's, it's 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 all about communication. It's communicating to all of the different people at all different levels so yeah. that they're all aware of what's going on and, and good decisions can be made with with your finances. Yeah, it's great. Isn't it? I think making sure that you've communicated all of the information as well, because to, without actually to dive into your example too much, you know, I, I, with with the reduced income, there's probably some reduced expenditure as well, some cost saving yeah. as a result of not doing that activity. So, making sure you you've told people about the whole, you know, the whole picture, um, mm. rather than just sort of something which in isolation might seem a bit odd, but actually, you know, when viewed as a whole, makes much more sense. Yeah, and I think we as we did a church meeting to kind of explore the reasons why, you know, for us, it was great to see the church say, okay, well, we're going to need to make some changes, but, but also there was this real joy of actually um, there's an adventure where God can bring resources in a new way that we hadn't heard of. And I think we, we immediately experienced that straight away. So we had a, uh, a kind of St. John's ambulance and, and blood service who had not previously used the building because they're like, well, you guys have got conferences these days. We need these set days a month. And we've been able to kind of say, well, actually, yeah, you could come and use the building and develop a kind of different sort of stream of income that really isn't kind of conferencing. It's just like, you know, yeah, put, put this training on for the community and we're seeing the community come as well. Um, and so God providing in different ways in that. And and I guess it's a bit of a journey for our church this year as we've got a deficit budget that actually we might need to do things a little differently. And yeah, we might need to focus on on some things to to get us through this next stage. And I often find when I chat to leaders about deficit budget, they've got savings in place or they've got uh, reserves and they can sometimes be reluctant to use them. But I think your point, Dan, about finding out why you're in a deficit budget is so so essential if, if there's this general decline in giving you may need to bring that to the attention of the, those leaders saying actually we need we, we need to teach on this as well as model this and and that's where the two things do come together that we we want to bring leadership into this and and this to inform our leadership about how they can can lead and make things better um sam anything else before we go on to pitfall four no i think that's everything i think Good. dan is going to bring our pitfall four what is it, Dan? What's number four on the list? Pitfall four, not having the right conversations. Um, so I think there's a few there's a few reasons for this. One is that people don't know what they don't know. They, you know, pretend, we see quite a lot of, um, I don't like the term financial trustee because trustees all have the same responsibilities, but inevitably someone will be more gifted or qualified or experienced in managing finances than others. And those that are less experienced, gifted, qualified, um, you know, might need some help in knowing what the good questions to ask are. You know, the, what does this technical term mean? What should I be worried? Is that that thing there that says, uh, you know, someone asked me in a meeting recently, oh, we've spent more on bank fees. Is that a problem? And I said, no, that's brilliant because there's been more income than we thought there'd be. And that's why we spent more on bank fees. But what they saw was more expenditure. Is that an issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, people knowing the right questions to ask but also the culture i've mentioned that before in you know in which they can ask those safely um there are some difficult conversations to have sometimes and having a, a good space to have those i think is really really important and then there are some sort of more technical things to think about so sometimes we feed people very intent on monitoring cash flow and not necessarily about income and expenditure and if you're creating accounts especially on an accruals basis then actually 
money in and out of your bank account can mean a whole load of different things. You know, you might be paying off loans, you might be buying fixed assets, you might be doing transfers, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, I'm going to say, you know, you need a good system to help you record, track and also understand that. And, what you know, the money's coming into the bank. It's not showing up on the statement. Why is that? Well, actually, it's paying off for this other thing or it's going off into that restricted fund. So it's not going to help pay for your yeah. dishwasher or whatever it is. And then I think there's a whole bit about sort of who's in the room. There's that you're always going to need some technical knowledge. And Sam has mentioned fund accounting. Um, but also for some of us, that might be some sort of denomination specific stuff. Um, I'm a treasurer of a Church of England church, and there's always new Church of England stuff happening that sort of to keep yeah. to keep up to date with. Um, so I think that's really important. But also, I'm a big fan of uh, of the fact that finance teams should be should have good representation across the whole church. It shouldn't just be a group of um, you know finance specialists sort of in the corner making decisions on behalf of the church. There should be representation across the whole church, um, and included in that sort of operational knowledge of what's happening sort of on the ground i mentioned earlier that you know you want to avoid what i sometimes call sort of ivory tower syndrome of people you know in there we had a finance team meeting on wednesday evening up in the up in the room in our church and it would have been easy really easy to say you know well it's as simple as that you know we'll have to cut some spending or whatever but but actually people people who are doing the work i say on the ground but you know on in the sort of coal face of the church being able to say, well, actually, it's not going to be that simple. Or, you know, you've asked everyone to give a bit more money. People just can't. It's not It's not as simple as that, I think, is, is really, really important. And I mentioned earlier about sort of giving people as much information as is helpful to them and not too much. Um, that might be because it's inappropriate. Most pastors don't want to know who's giving what. Um, or it might be just because it's really unhelpful and you're giving them so many numbers that they can't see, um, can't see the wood for the trees. And I suppose... In terms of not having the right conversations, uh, I'd take it back to what I said at the start about making sure all of this finance stuff that we've talked about is aligned with your, in the secular world, we might say strategic priorities, but your goals and your vision as a church. You know, if you said in this next season, naught to 30 is really important, or you've said actually it's all about discipleship, and then you're saying, oh no, we're not going to give any money to small group resources, you know, um, or whatever it is, then that doesn't seem doesn't seem quite right. So does the does the money marry the mission uh, if you want if you want yeah. to catch phrase um i think is really really important uh, and ultimately are we putting our treasure where our heart is and i think i would say to people you know if they if they're thinking well what what conversation should we have what com- what information should i give then actually getting advice from your peers whether you're a treasurer or a, an ops manager or an administrator or or whoever can be really really vital and really really helpful um, Sam and I have both been ops managers in our time and we both found re- you can really 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 helpful um, but there are various federations as well um, we have a Facebook forum for our users and expense plus um, and sometimes they ask expense plusy questions and we're really happy to help with those but also they're you know oh have you heard about this scheme or are your trustees asking these questions or how might we best present this sort of thing so I think having that peer support wherever you find it is really really important um, because it's it's easiest to hear from people that are facing the same sort of challenges, questions, and and joys and privileges as you really. Yeah, that's great. That's helpful, Dan. Uh, Sam, anything you'd add on to that? No, I think this this point's just really important, isn't it? Having the right conversations, having the space to have those conversations, having the freedom to have those conversations, and bring the right questions. So having the right people in the room, it's just so so important. And um, because actually, finances needs to be the whole team, uh, the whole trustee team are in charge, are, are responsible for kind of uh, kind of the church's finances. And so it's really important to have the right people having the right conversations. So I think Dan summarised it really well. Yeah, that's really helpful, isn't it? And and I, I love the kind of idea of conversations. And and it and what we're talking about here is people, isn't it? You know, it's it's people leading ministries. It's it's leaders who are leading the church. And um, you know, it's it's great to be able to kind of serve the church in this way. And and sometimes if you if you do feel a bit siloed, if you do feel a bit out of it, um, as a finance person or a treasurer, then look at how could you change that. You know, I had to kind of change the the culture and the interest in finance. I had to keep on asking questions. What do you think about this? I'm spending money on this, but but have you guys got an opinion about this? Of what do you think our priorities are? Can I refine our priorities to make sure that what we're spending fits to to what you're doing? And and sometimes you have to kind of take a a bit of initiative to start those. So don't don't always wait for that to kind of come the one way from leadership teams, but actually going and saying, hey, can you, can I have your thoughts 
on this um, is really, really useful. Um, Sam, just as we finish then, any sort of words of encouragement or uh, for, for treasurers, for people in the finance world? Because it, it's a bit of a forgotten ministry sometimes, isn't it? It can be. Um, often you, you carry quite a lot of responsibility just being a single treasurer. Um, what would you say to folks who are who are listening to this, who are serving in this area? Yeah, I mean, I just love the picture of the church just being a body of people, like kind of uh, like every part of that body just being kind of like serving. And actually, yeah, church treasurers quite often are behind the scenes. They're not often mm-hmm. the people that are up front. They're not often the people that kind of get praised. And often they have the thankless task of being the ones that have to maybe uh, make hard decisions or kind of initiate hard conversations. But I would just want to say to any treasurers listening to this, that you are a massive blessing to your church. Like mm. you might not, you might not see it. You might not feel it. You uh, definitely might not always feel that appreciated, but what you do does matter. And just thank you. Thank you for just uh, being so servant hearted and serving your churches in that way. You enable so much of what your church is doing to happen. And without you, it just wouldn't be possible. So yeah, just massive encouragement for those that are serving uh, um, in in finances in churches in whatever capacity that is yeah that's great yeah anything you'd add on to that dan yeah i think sam's summed it up really really well i think um you know there are a lot of of treasurers especially in smaller churches who are doing everything through from the sort of finance admin bookkeeping right up to the sort of more strategic stuff um and i think as sam said earlier just making sure that this the Systems, and I use that word sort of widely, processes you're working with are are serving you well and are not more complex than they need to be um, is really, really important. Um, and again, maybe just, you know, asking that question every couple of years, do we need to do it the same way we've always done it? You know, I, uh, I sometimes am tempted to sort of, you know, leave typos on the back page of a report to see whether anyone's actually actually seeing it. And, you know, if uh, if people haven't looked at something a few meetings in a row, say, well, do we still need to include that? Because it's taken me half an hour to get this these numbers to you or whatever. So I think that's not my official advice. But, you know, just making sure that you're not tasking yourself with more than more than you need to, because there's a, it's a really busy, busy role and, and, and there's so much to do. But, yeah, like Sam said, um, thank you very much for all you're doing. Yeah, it does make a huge difference and 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 it does to the mission. And you're right, you're talking about kind of marrying our finances to to our mission. It, and that alignment is so so crucial, isn't it? And if we can get our vision, our building, and our finances and our staff all aligned, it, it's almost it's a very powerful thing, isn't it? That you know, um and uh so so if you're involved in it then thank you if you're listening to this and gone into complete utter panic mode as you've gone oh my goodness we haven't got a budget oh my goodness we don't use any software um then then take a breath and and please get in touch you, you know we want this podcast to serve churches and if you're involved in the church and you're thinking what do i do first then have a conversation with us, have a conversation with Expense Plus, have a look at their demo. If this can really serve and bless you, then reach out and um, we would love to be able to serve you. And if you've got any questions from the podcast, then um, then please get in touch at questions at the church uk. We'd love to to hear from you. And if you've got some lovely things to say about Expense Plus, then then send them in as well. We'd lo- I'm sure you guys love a bit of good feedback as well. We'd love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's great. Well, lads, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for sharing the pitfalls of finances, church finances, and and there's some great advice. We love what you guys are doing. We love your hearts for the local church, and we are so grateful to partner with you, and uh, it's to be a blessing. And to to serve churches in the background is a a joy, isn't it? And uh, I know that we all experience that. So thank you for listening to the podcast. Thank you for tuning in and uh, yeah we do hope that the church office is a blessing to you and if there's any way that we can serve you more effectively then please let us know we'd love to hear from you all right speak to you soon my friends bye-bye bye hey gavin <laughs>